In today's episode, we chat about one of the most popular topics out there, and to do so, we invited Mentor Pilot, who is an airline pilot and full-time YouTuber. We will learn about his journey on social media and how to make an impact in others regardless of your field. Today we're here with Pilot Alexander, a very special guest, Sergio, or Pilot Sergio, welcome. Today we have a very special guest, Pilot Susie. Yeah. What we have? Pilot Sergio here with us. Today we have Captain Chris with us, welcome. Our channel was created as a tool to conceptualize your love for aviation. Here, we also invite pilots and experts in the aviation and aerospace industry to help you in your journey. I am Mao. And I am Genesis. And, and this, this is, is Just, Just a Pilot. Hi everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're very happy that he, we have Peter here with us. He's better known as Mentor Pilot. Uh, we're just very happy to have you here. Uh, we have some great questions for you today, and we're just very excited for this. Yeah. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, it's super exciting to finally see the, the background we see in all the videos of Mentor Pilot. So <laughs> that's very great. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I've, I've actually just gotten this office just a few uh, a few months back now. So uh, I'm, I've moved away from my my home kind of office where my wife used to have a nail saloon into this, which is much better. All right, it looks amazing. <laughs> we love it. Okay, yeah, so I guess my first question, I had, we had a lot of questions when we, prepared, we were preparing for the interview. We know you have a lot of amazing background on this. So we wanted to ask you, um, what is the story behind Mentor Pilot? And what was your motivation to start it from the beginning? Okay, so uh, Mentor Pilot, um, it came from my wife, really. Like, she was tired of me moping around the house, not having anything to mm -hmm. do. So she said, basically, just can, can you not do something? Maybe start a YouTube channel or do something? And I thought, <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually a good idea. Um, obviously, before this, I've been running the channel for five years now. And before that, I've been working now for 15 years as an, um, as an instructor, as a type rating instructor. And, and then a typewriting examiner on the Boeing 737. So instructing and trying to teach people has been a part of my life for a very long time. Um, but back then, um, I also was starting to be a little bit interested in both entrepreneurship and, um, and also social media, because I realized that social media was going to become just a bigger and bigger part of everyone's life. But I didn't know anything about it. Like I, I see it like I was on Facebook, but that was about it. I didn't understand how it worked. And I thought the only way really to understand how something works is to actually immerse yourself in it, to go into it and try and see what happens to it and, you know, learn from that. And what I realized when I was out talking to people like, like you, for example, people who wanted to become pilots for whatever reason is that, that it was, there were forums on the internet, like, P. Prune, for example, and those that they existed, but they were very far from motivational, right? You, yeah. you went on to one of those forums and if you were a student pilot and you didn't ask the right questions, people would laugh at you. They would be nasty. They wouldn't, they wouldn't help you in any way. And if you asked like, oh, yeah, I, I really want to be a pilot for American Airlines, you would immediately yeah. have like 40 messages saying how much that sucked or any airline in the world, it, doesn't, it didn't matter. So I felt there is a, there's a dislodge here. There's something that's not right because I love my job and I know my friends love their job. Why are people so negative when it comes to social media? And I realized that happy pilots are not on social media. They're out playing golf or enjoying their friends. You know, they're out rock climbing or whatever it might be. They're, they're definitely not sitting in front of the computer. The people who are, are the people who are not happy the ones that needs to vent their frustration, right? So I realized that there is probably a, there, there's room here for someone who actually sees their job as something positive and is willing to talk about it. And, and I was, like, I, I was happy about being a pilot. I was an instructor, an examiner. Um, so I thought, I'll give my point of view and we'll see what happens. So that's the origin story of it. 
Well, that's crazy. You know, when yesterday then we were looking at your videos and stuff, uh, uh, we were like, we thought like he makes everything so simple, you know, he just simplifies aviation and he, he sometimes talks about complex topics in a simple way. And he also talks about simple topics in a simple way, which makes it very easy to understand for everyone, even if so for someone that doesn't have a background in aviation could be very easy to understand. And as you say, sometimes the industry could be a little hostile, but uh, for sure it's good to have, I don't know, a, I don't know, a place where you can go and, okay, I can understand this, you know? Yeah, not only that, you need to, like everyone is children to start with. Like that's, we, we all come from a place where we don't understand something or where we don't right. know what. Even, even Chuck Yeager would have not had any clue about how to fly an aircraft when he started off. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there, needs to, there needs to be an understanding that you have to start from humble beginnings and build up your knowledge. And if there is people like me and eventually you um, who are willing to come in and, and explain things, from not you know saying that that's a stupid question you should know better, but actually saying that yeah you know actually an aircraft you know you would get questions like why does an aircraft fall down, which is a perfectly logical question to ask when you're holding up a model aircraft and you drop it it falls down. So why doesn't the big aircraft that it weighs tens or hundreds of tons fall down? Well then you have to go into aerodynamics and you have to explain like you know how a boat kind of works and you know then you build from there into something that people do recognize and then it makes sense so but the needs to you need to have that leeway you have to walk that way up in order to understand it and my goal with my videos have always been that my mom which is not into aviation by the way should understand what i'm talking about right now, she's an intelligent woman but she's not into aviation so if i can talk to her in a way that she would understand the logic behind what I'm saying, well, then most people out there will understand it. Absolutely. And that's, the, that, that's, that's how I run my videos. That's, that's what goes through every single one of the videos that I make. Right, I totally agree. And going on from what you mentioned about social media and all this negativity around it, I think all these forums like Reddit or any other forum, you get into it and everyone is right like, no, don't get into aviation, don't do this, don't do that. You're not gonna be happy. You're gonna be miserable because of this. And they give you a thousand reasons why you're not gonna be happy and why is it not gonna work for you because, oh, you you have this problem, it's not gonna work for you, just forget it. So yeah. I think doing this platform that you have and all these videos and all this information out there is motivating more people to get into it, you know? And especially with the pandemic and everything that happened recently, a lot of people were uh, losing their motivation towards aviation and these types of careers. And I'm pretty sure they watch your videos and they're like, oh, maybe I should wait. Maybe it's still worth it because it's my dream. You know, they just, they just don't give up forever because somebody told them like a stranger on the internet. <laughs> like you, there's not, if you come up with a great idea, no matter what that idea is, no matter if it has to do with aviation or something in general life, if you bring that idea forward, you will always get this reaction from people. They will always say that this is not going to work for A, B, C, D. No one is going to list why that might potentially work and what happens if that potentially works, right? So that, and that's a life lesson. It doesn't have to do anything with aviation. It's just a life lesson. If you are passionate about something and you believe in something, you want to try something out, never listen to the general public. All right. Unless you know, the, and it's, it, a, a good advice basically is like, don't take criticism from people that whose advice you wouldn't take. Awesome. Yeah, you don't have to do, you don't have to pull it further than that. But that, that is the core of it. The, the large, like the big group of people out there, you wouldn't, you wouldn't sit and listen. You wouldn't take life advice from, from those people. But they will not, like, they will be afraid. They wouldn't do it themselves. And they would lift all of the reasons why they wouldn't do something to you. But it has nothing to do with you. Right. They don't know your background or your possibilities or what you want to try to achieve. Like, there's not a single entrepreneur out there who would manage to make any company work if they would have listened to what people said. Look at Elon Musk. You know, who, who would have said that, yeah, yeah, you know, Build a space <laughs> company. Uh, I mean, start, 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 like, yeah, start competing with NASA. That's a great idea. Like, no. <laughs> right. that, that doesn't happen. Now, having said that, you also need to be aware of the realities. 
surrounding what it is that you're getting yourself into. And that's also been a very, very like prevalent part of my channel where I talk about where the mismatches are between what people expect the job to be and what the job actually is. Absolutely. Right? Because as with any job that you do, there will be some great things and there will be some not so great things. And I think a lot of people, especially young people, I know myself, when they go in, they, they, they have a, a picture of being an airline pilot. It's like, yeah, it's big, shiny jets going off to the Caribbean, staying for a week, great, flying back again, loads of money, time off. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> waving at them at the airport. <laughs> yeah, and you're looking, you're looking like a movie star going to <laughs> catch me if you can, that kind of, of feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Like <laughs> and, and you do, like there are generally times when that happens, right? But that's not what the reality of the job is. The reality of the job is that it is quite demanding, you know, and you, you work a lot and long hours and it's under constant time pressure. And, um, and it's like you, you might be away during weekends and during birthdays and Christmas and all of these things that we as a society take for granted. Right. The whole society is built around weekends, for example. Everything that's fun happens on a Saturday evening. Uh, everything, you know, Christmas, everyone is assuming that you're off. So that's when everything kind of works family-wise and things. So, so these things, then you need to be aware of that as you get yourself into it. Because as a teenager, you are going to think, <laughs> if you give me a, a brand new 777 and let me fly it, it doesn't matter how many Christmases I'm going to work. But then as you're 28, 29, and you've gotten engaged to your girlfriend and you're awaiting your first child or something, all of a sudden, that becomes what is important to you. But now you're sitting as an airline pilot and that Christmas is not available to you for the next three years because you had last year off, you know? So like these things, they, you need to be aware of it and right. because it will become more important than you think and sooner than you think, you know? Absolutely. But having no, do you, when you know that and you go into this business with your eyes open, knowing that it's probably gonna cost you a lot of money to do the training, there would be some financial strains associated with it until you have that first airline job. Well, then at least you're honest against, honest with yourself. Right. And it's likely that it's going to be a, a more pleasant long-term experience for you. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, it doesn't stop being a job, you know. Everything becomes a job. Yeah, I always take as an example, you know, Top Gear. Um, right. Yeah, the yeah. car show. The car show. Yeah. Remember, what's his name? Jeremy, the old yeah. host. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Jeremy Clarkson is the name. So, he, like, in my view, he had the ultimate job. Like, his job was to go around the world, exotic countries, and drive the best cars in the world and get paid millions for it. Right. right? That, that was his job. But he still managed to get himself fired from it because he was throwing food, I think, at some assistant because he was pissed off because of the schedule or whatever. So, he had the best job in the world and he still managed to be miserable with it right. right that goes to show that it's likely that there are no perfect jobs out there right but if the benefits are bigger than the, the downsides of it and you are aware of the downside well then you're more likely to make smart decisions it's a great comparison yeah absolutely well our next question we have for you is uh what impact has has mentor pilot had on you <laughs> yeah well um I, it's pretty substantial Right. Yeah. Um, for example, I have a, an income now, which I didn't, wouldn't have if it weren't for, for my YouTube channel and for all of my social media ventures. Right. Um, it's been a year now uh, during which I have flown maybe a total of 50 hours. Oh. Right. Normally I fly 800 hours. Oh. So, um, and the, the, my income. Uh, was is dependent on me actually operating working but during the pandemic now there's been no work the aircraft the, the i think my company is down to 13 percent of its normal capacity and mm -hmm. everyone has to share on those flights to to try to stay current and things and and i've been in in the fortunate position to, to basically turn down and say listen give flights to the other guys that needs it i can actually survive on my job my second job which is now my primary job during the pandemic so that has been a huge thing and then of course i mean it's 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 lovely yeah i, I like the point i wanted what i really wanted with my channel was to to share some positivity and some 
motivation with people who want to get into this business and also to people who are afraid of flying and things like that. And, and when you do that, you get that love back. All right. You, you get it through comments. You get it through people coming up to, uh, to me at the airports and, uh, and emails. And, and I have a fantastic Patreon crew that is supporting the work that I do. So it's, it's, a, it's a very, very positive impact all in all. It's like a family. <laughs> yeah, uh, aviation is like that. But it, I think I think I've found kind of the, the upside of social media, which is where if you if you constantly try to be supportive, try to be um, building people up, being honest still, you know, but but try to be positive and constructive all the time. Well, then you get that back. If you go the negative route, like if you go through the route where you call people out or you're negative, it's likely that your following is going to be bigger because people have a tendency to be drawn towards controversy and towards uh, conflict. So right. it's, like, it's easier to get yourself a huge following doing that. However, you are then also going to be part of the negative side of social media. We can be like an avalanche if you are not prepared for it. Yeah, yeah. you become a victim of that too. So... Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're doing it positively for you, it's there's a lot of reward in that, right? Like personally in your life, like you see all these people being impacted by what you say on social media. And I guess those are things you didn't really get to do before your platform, right? Because there's a lot of people involved in this now. Yeah, I mean, of course you, you can do this on a personal level. You don't have to be a YouTuber to have a positive impact. You can do that towards friends, family, um, people you run into as well. To be a mentor to people is important no matter what you are, no matter how many followers you have, right? So I want, I want to make that absolutely clear. However, it becomes amplified when you have a, a platform like me that reaches hundreds of thousands of people per day, then, you, then whatever you say and whatever positive impact that you might have is going to be amplified. So, mm -hmm. so yes. Yes, it is like you, you, you can do a lot of things. I can do a lot of things now that I could not do before. Right. right. Yeah, and going on from that, um, has Mentor Pilot had any uh, development or helped you advance in your professional career as a pilot? Uh, no, no. Um, like there was a lot, when I started doing this, uh, a lot of people were questioning it because it's not traditionally something that um, someone who was in who's a senior captain who's a type rating examiner does right exposing yourself on the on on the internet has traditionally had a lot of downsides very little upsides so um so from my professional career it has neither done anything positive nor negative on it um it has enabled me to go down to half time which means that you know, I'm, I'm going to be, even when this pandemic is over, I'm hopefully going to be flying a little bit less and focusing more on, on this side of life and my family, which is really important. But uh, I think something that's really important, and I want to say that now for people, pilots who go into social media, is to realize that you do stick your head up above the crowd. Okay. And depending on how you do that, because it's going to be perceived differently from different people. It might put you into a position which you don't want to be in as well. Like you, you might come to an interview for an airline and that airline or that interviewer has seen you on social media in a setting that he didn't like, right? I might have said something that he didn't agree or she didn't agree with, right? And this is going to put me at a disadvantage. Also, there is, there is a perceived risk of dealing with influencers, because, because of the, the kind of reach that we have, very few airlines actually want their uh, employees to be, to be talking, you know, to have a platform to talk. They do want them to work, do what they're supposed to, and leave all kind of public announcement to them. So there, is, there are several airlines that forbids uh, their employees to, to be on social media in that form. Right. Okay. My airline has been very patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> they've, let me they've let me be the one I am 
providing that I do not speak as a spokesperson for them or not right. show their logo or not, not come off as being someone who speaks on their behalf because I'm not. I only speak on my own behalf. Right. But they have been very like they have let me do it partially because I've been very open to them and ask them when there's been something that is slightly controversial. I've, I've checked that off and been in constant contact with them to make sure that this is not something I'm trying to do behind closed doors, you know. Um, but it, it is, I mean, especially the Instagram generation is becoming a little bit of an issue in the, uh, in the, in the industry because the more people want to sit and take nice photos of approaches and stuff while they should be flying the aircraft, the bigger problem becomes. And for each one who does that, there's going to be one more airline that forbids it. So, you know? so social media and aviation is something that you have to be, you have to be very smart and very careful about. Right. Is there any negative judgment when you post pictures in the cockpit or anything? I have to be careful when I do it. It cannot be during sterile phases of life, for example. Right. I cannot be I cannot be seen doing anything that, that shouldn't be done. So taking a photo of a of a nice sunset with an approved device, you know, we have cameras on our on, on our flight bags or something like that are approved to be in the in the cockpit. That could be okay, you know, but but for any remember any photo that you put up, any photo that I put up, there's going to be thousands of people are going to be looking in the zoom in on each right. One. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> it is there. So once again, I like be very careful with that because it is it's impossible to motivate if something comes out, if someone complains about it to the aviation authorities, for example. Right. Yeah, and then yeah, that's I guess that's the thing with the airline that you are basically representing them, and if there's any issue with that on social media, they're they're the ones who will be attacked at the end of the day. So we, yeah, I mean, like like I said, I don't, I never I never need need to talk about my airline or show logos or anything, but but it's it's like I've been told basically that you don't say who you work for, but everyone knows who you work for. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to. You have to have that in the back of your mind, and just be smart. Like when you're flying, if you're taking off, you're climbing out, you're descending in, or or whatever. That's you're now working, and you're now focusing on that. That's the priority. You yeah, I mean, at the end, picture. At the end, you you just have to be very professional. Yes, yes. It's all about this this job, and this um in this line of business. It's all about that. You have to show a professional side of yourself. You have to be. The one that is given that impression to people. If you're not, then you become a problem. Right. Well, now going back to what you said uh, that uh, now is because of the pandemic and everything, you've flown very little and you invested a lot of time on social media and everything. So I guess it's like a full time job for you. I wonder yeah. how much time do you put into Metro Pilot every day and how do you balance it with work and your personal life? I mean, I know you're not flying that much right now, but when you do, how do you balance that? Right now, this is my first, this is my full-time job. So I have breakfast with my family. I, um, I normally take a cup of coffee at home. I'm not much of a morning worker. So I, I chill out mm -hmm. in the sofa a little bit, maybe speak to my wife um, a little bit there. Then I go down to the office and I create. I either be researching, reading up on final report, which is a series that I'm doing right now, um, scripting, filming, editing, sending it to my graphic designer and editor, getting stuff back that needs, that's why I was a minute late to this meeting because I was actually talking to my graphic designer about something mm -hmm. that I might need to redo for this week's release. Um, so right now I am working full time and that is yeah, 40 hours a week-ish. Mm -hmm. When I'm flying, obviously I won't be doing that. So the idea is, like I said, I've gone down on half time. The idea is that I'll work up a couple of, of videos to send it off to production so that during my working week I'll be working flying and then I'll be back and I'll be producing again during those that time off but make no mistake this is not this this is not easy <laughs> this yeah, is no. hard work yeah you know sometimes I see influencers saying like because I don't know sometimes people say that oh influencers they 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 I don't know, they have like perfect lives and they didn't, they don't have to put that work. And I'm, I don't know, I think, I don't think it's that way, you know, they don't see all the, all the, behind the like scenes. behind the scenes. Yeah, behind being an influencer, it's just a lot of work, a lot of preparation, a lot of 
Everything. Yeah, and it's also, it's also depending on what type of influencer. That yeah, you absolutely. I don't perceive myself as an influencer because that, for me, that is like, for example, going away to to resorts and taking pictures of of nice resorts and, as you say, showing a perfect life where they're actually working their butts off. Right. You know, in reality, I know a few of them, and and I know that when they go there, they, that that's like one hundred percent work. Right. All of those like flashy breakfasts and sunsets <laughs> sun, that right. that, that's like okay you know if you take it from this direction then you know we get the sun over there so can you do that walk again uh, <laughs> that, that's that, that's what it looks like in reality my i do more like for now i've been locked down because of the uh, pandemic obviously so i'm only here in my sofa so my my kind of setups is, is different but i'm more of a storyteller that's what i'm i'm trying to do right And um, I mean, I saw that you are almost up to a million subscribers, uh, almost there. <laughs> so I wonder, what's your next goal with uh, Mentor Pilot? What's your next milestone or your end goal with your channel? There's no end goal. There, they can't be. Um, my end goal is to reach and influence as many people as possible to help. Um, if I can, like a good example, the, the Mentor Aviation app, for example, was something that I started early. Um, I started doing 360 videos in a separate app, and then I created the Mentor Aviation app, which is a social media kind of hangout for aviation people. Um, and that has been working quite okay, but I found out quite quickly that uh, it costs a lot of money to keep working on an app. Every change that I do requires an enormous initial investment, and then I need to keep it going. So the last thing I've done is connect to a, a Discord server, And on Discord, obviously, Discord is easier because they fix all of the things. You just need to find a community. And so there's like three and a half thousand people in that Discord server at the moment. And I just love watching how they interact with each other because I cannot be there all the time. I'm working on creating content. Right. So they are in there and you have like instructors that comes in and you have student pilots that comes in and student pilots ask a question. Then you have the instructors ask. And all of a sudden, I created this this organism where exactly what it is that I'm trying to do myself is actually happening but without my input and this is what I would really like by like creating these kind of social movements where people come in and they're positive and they help each other and I can control it you know I can say that no hate is not okay you know if someone starts to misbehave out and now we, we have a better server right there, there shouldn't that everyone should be contributing, helping, supporting, because there are enough of those other forums where people hate on each other and are nasty to each other. Right. So my, my, like my goal with the channel is obviously to become bigger, more influential, so that I, have, I can create more awesome content. The bigger I become, the more companies will want to invite me. I will be able to go to the places and you know go in and visit the cockpit of an Antenna 225 or Um, do a, a type rating on an Airbus or, or, or do really cool things. And the bigger, you know, kind of yeah. um, uh, Mr. Beast style where he reinvests what he gets into the next video and it just makes it more and more awesome. I mean, that's, that, I think that's the goal of most people who have YouTube channels of this size. My first, like my real goal right now is to get past the 1 million um, mark. And that's going to, You know, it's been an uphill battle the last year or so. It's been kind of stagnating a little bit. So I need to up my game and make it better. I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I will. I, and that's another thing we talked about in the beginning of the, of the interview. We, we, we talked about how, you know, you can't listen to what people say and that you have to kind of go your own way sometimes. This YouTube channel is a, is a perfect example of that. Like I said, in the beginning, people were just asking, dude, why are you doing that? You have like 15 followers on YouTube. Why, uh, why would you be out there talking about the job that you do? You earn enough. You, you know, why? But I wanted to do this because I wanted to try it. And so far in my life, I've never come up against something that cannot be overcome by hard work and dedication. So it might not be as easy as you think. Um, but you keep going with it, you keep working on it, and eventually you will get there. The analogy for you would be, you do your flight training, you might not get a job or your dream job in the beginning. In fact, I'm sure that you won't, but you will as you keep going at it. 
as you keep building contacts, as you keep working on and doing a good job at the um, little nail company that you might be starting to fly for or whatever it might be, and then you will move yourself forward. And I mean, now I'm sitting here with a channel that, that reaches, I'm, I'm coming up to 100 million views in probably this month, actually. Wow. Um, not, no one thought, not, not even I thought that that would happen, but it did, but it didn't happen by itself. It's five years of uploading at least one video a week, wow. 560 videos, I think it's up now. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, it, and, but it just worked. You just keep going at it and you suck in the beginning because you, everyone always sucks in the beginning. <laughs> I go back and I look at my old video, my first video, where I was sitting like this, basically, just non-interactive, talking into, my, into the, you know, the, the, um, the webcam of my, my uh, computer. Yeah. But compare that to where, what we're doing now, it's two completely different worlds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I think what you were just saying covers a little bit about our next question, and I would like you to elaborate a little bit more on that. So what would you advise to people that have this um, desire or they're looking to start um, something like you did, like this dream? Um, what would you tell them? Uh, how would you guide them to do it in a world where every idea seems to be taken already? Yeah, so... First of all, it doesn't matter if every idea has been taken away. All right. The first person who did cheese didn't become the only person who made cheese. You know, it's just a matter of you doing something that is good, maybe slightly better than someone else. Right. And like I said, you won't be doing that in the beginning. But there is some there's there are some fundamental truths to getting YouTube to work for you or to, to be a success on social media is. One, you need to do something that you're passionate about and that you're willing to share. So a person that comes and say, I want to be a YouTuber. No, right? <laughs> you, don't, you, don't go, you don't go to become a YouTuber. But a carpenter who says, I would love to share how I build these things through YouTube, that will succeed. You know, go out and look at like wood turning. And see what happens. <laughs> you know, like you, you, if, if you are good at something and you have a passion that you want to share and you are genuine about it, it's going to go through the, uh, the, the camera and people will love watching you do it. But if you're doing something with the sole purpose of trying to get more followers or more, that's when you get stuck. That's when you sit there and say, I don't understand. I've done all of this. I've watched all of these YouTube videos about how to get a thousand subscribers, but nothing works. No, <laughs> but, but maybe if you do a video about how hard it is to reach a thousand subscribers, <laughs> you'll all of a sudden have a thousand subscribers. Like, it is about you being genuine and push and you know, genuinely giving something to your audience. Like, like I'm trying to do with you guys here right now. That's, that's what you need to do. So that's number one. Number two is persistence. Because like, like I said, it will not happen overnight. There are a few, pe a few persons that have managed to go and you don't know, like skyrocket with their channels. They tend to have a very set strategy for how they are going to achieve it. But even someone like Mr. Beast, for example, started off very, very, you know, small. Everyone does. But then he had a strategy where he just took everything that he earned and he reinvested it into the channel. And he wanted to make better videos and he didn't release videos that he didn't think was good enough for his audience. And he kept at it because he realized that what YouTube algorithms, for example, really care about is how long people are watching your content. If you can keep someone engaged and they love what they're seeing for the whole, you know, percentage of your video, well, then YouTube is going to say, well, I can sell a lot of advertising there. <laughs> you know, and that's, that, that's what it's all about. Quality of the output, passion for what you do and persistence in uploading. You do that, it will work. Right? It's going to take a while. You're going to sit there at a thousand subscribers for six months, maybe a year. But all of a sudden, then you're at, you make these jumps. And then suddenly you're at 30,000 subscribers. And, ooh, and now it's going to go on for a while. And then it jumps again because you make a good video that, that people like. So it's persistence and quality. Right. Yeah. To summarize, you're saying that you need to have a strategy, a plan, and make it work. <laughs> uh, yeah. You need to have a passion. Right. Okay. 
you need to have a passion and a genuine kind of will to to deliver something to give something to your audience right the audience shouldn't be given to you you should be given to the audience if that's that that is your strategy on top of that the strategy is to be persistent to have a good uploading schedule for example to be push pushing what you're doing and to have a thought maybe behind what you're doing you know it you will learn after a while that if you are really boring people will click off no matter how good your content is so no matter if you're a star if you're a, a, a i don't know a microbiologist and you know everything there is about your specific niche but you sit there and you're super super technical and you explain it you're passionate about it but no one understands what you're saying it probably won't go viral uh-huh. <laughs> um but if if you can if you can kind of sit down before you are going to t- make that speech about whatever microbiology you're talking about and you can think about okay how do, do you have any pictures i can use maybe some graphs maybe you know maybe i can spice this up a little bit or explain it in a simpler way and then you put it out but well, now you're giving more to more people right absolutely wow that well, was amazing <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much uh Everything was amazing. I was really happy to have you here today. Yeah, to you know, this has been an amazing experience and getting to talk to you. This is a great opportunity for us to learn to and to, you know, boost our goals with Just As Pilot. And yeah, it's been great. And I'm sure our followers will love it too. So thank you. Yeah. You guys, like basically two people running or doing a YouTube channel and stuff and interacting with each other works really well. All right. Just make yeah. sure that you interact with each other because people want to see that. They want to see the chemistry, you talking with each other, looking at each other, stuff like that. That that works really, really well. <laughs> you channel okay. where you're too, Thank you. Right? right? Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. And don't forget to follow him on social media. He's everywhere as Mentor Pilot. And we are everywhere as Just As Pilot. And our website is justaspilot.com. And yeah, if you're interested, you can join his Discord channel. Sounds amazing too. <laughs> and yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like our video. And we'll see you again in our next episode. Yeah, like the video. Put a little comment in this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.